We have a 2010 Mazda 3 i Touring, and the car came with a technology package, so it had the sunroof and the Bose 10 speaker system. And I'm going to be doing an upgrade to the stereo system. We're going to have the car for a while, so I want to have uh, good tunes in here. The Bose is adequate, um, but definitely uh, there's a lot of room for improvement. And I'm not going to go nuts. Um, I'm just going to do, you'll, you'll see, I'm going to um, try to minimize the amount of work that I need to do. Um, you know, it's not going to be audiophile type of installation. It's it's going to be best bang for the buck. So um, hopefully I'll take some mystery out of the Bose system. A lot of times people think that they need to replace the head unit and the amp and the speakers and all of this stuff. Um, we'll address that stuff as we go along. So anyhow, uh, stay tuned. All right, a quick overview of the Bose system. The uh, stock system has 10 speakers. Door speaker, tweeter, it's got a center speaker right here. Um, and then there's door speaker in the back, uh, mid tweets on the rear deck, and an 8 inch woofer on the rear deck. Now, you know, all of these drivers are pretty low quality. You know, I'm, obviously they're trying to keep the cost down. And what Bose does is they have a proprietary amp and with built in DSP and EQ so that they can shape the sound for this car. Everything is built into the amp which is underneath the passenger seat. So my plan is to keep the stock head unit so we we keep the stereo that way I maintain my Bluetooth you know uh, the phone um, the stock look and I take the output from that head unit and I put it into my own amp which will remove the existing bows, put it into a good quality amp, and I'll drive uh, speakers up front. So I'll have a door speaker, I'll have a tweeter on each side, and then I'll have a subwoofer in the trunk. All of these other speakers w won't uh, be used. Now, um, I mean, with good quality components and a good quality amp, the sound should be much much better than stock so that's the plan and uh, we'll be right back alright this is where all the magic happens right here this is a wiring diagram for 2010-2011 Mazda 3 and Mazda Speed 3 Bose systems um, might be used on other cars I'm not sure but this was made by G Anderson so we'll give him credit for this but this shows all the connections from the head unit to that amp underneath the passenger seat. So if you think about it, a lot of people pull the head unit and they put those pack uh, devices and try to get low level output and you know try to get access to all the wiring. Well, the wiring all exists underneath the passenger seat, so we don't even have to pull the head unit. Um, I haven't removed the seat, but from what I've read, it's a simple five-minute thing, so um, don't get nervous about that. But we'll pull the seat, we'll have access to all of this wiring, and let me just show you what's on here. You've got three connectors, one, two, three, that'll all be made to the amp under the seat. These connectors contain all of the speaker connections to the ten speakers, so we already have wire that's rooted from the amp to the speakers. The, the uh, factory wiring goes from underneath that passenger seat to all of those speakers. Again, I'm not going for you know a, a high-end install. I'm not going to rerun um, speaker wires. I'm going to use the factory speaker wires and this should be very easily uh, accessible now. The other thing this has is the input from the head unit to the amp. Now my understanding is that head unit is uh, um, puts out a low level about two volts uh, like same as a pre-out from an aftermarket head unit so it puts out a low level signal to this Bose amp and 
Um, I also understand from what I've read that it's a flat signal, so there's no processing, and um, it should be, you know, give the full range of uh, of sound to the um, to the amp input, which is what we want. So um, if you look on this connector, this shows the front left, front right, rear left, rear right low level inputs. So all I need to do is splice into these wires with an RCA connector and now I've got two RCA's that'll go to my amp I'll just do the fronts and from the amp I can make my output connections to the wiring on this connector actually it's this connector this is connected to the front left front right and I'll splice into those wires and um, and I'll connect that to my amp and that'll be the output to the front speakers. Um, this also has power and it also has remote amp turn on. So again, this is everything that we need to put that aftermarket amp under the passenger seat and bypass this Bose system. So stay tuned, we'll go back in the car and see how this stuff works. So I just want to show you some equipment that will be going in the car. Um, I bought these Focal PS165s to replace the stock woofer and tweeter. Um, these are six and a half inch round woofer um, speakers and the OEM, the Bose speaker, that I'm replacing is a 5x7 or 6x8 speaker. So I originally was just going to get um, like a coaxial full range speaker and, and replace the woofer and the door um, and, and you know with a 5x7 to make the installation easy, quick. And um, you know if you do that you're, you're still going to be much better off than the Bose system. You know a good quality aftermarket speaker even down there, full range with good with a good amp is going to sound much better. But um, I figure I'm going to take advantage. There's already a tweeter. There's tweeter wires run to the sail panel. There's a space in the sail panel for this tweeter. So I stepped up and I, I bought these. Um, and plus they're a little bit more money than you know. I figured I was going to spend about a hundred bucks. I pr I spent a little over twice that. So, but anyway, that's going up front. Uh, the installation will be a little bit more involved because I'll have to deal with an adapter. Um, and the other thing I got, I picked this up on Craigslist. That's a 12-inch uh, sub. Now that's kind of overkill. I didn't intend to go 12-inch. I was looking for like an 8 or 10-inch. Um, and I, I still may go back to that if I don't like the sound of this. This may be too boomy or loud. Um, it just may be too much, but I got a good deal on Craigslist. Somebody local was selling it, so I just I grabbed it. And uh, if I don't like it, I'll get my money back. I'll just sell it. So that's that. And then I've got uh, an amp coming in the mail. I bought off eBay, uh, eBay seller. It's um, a GL, I mean a JL Audio XD 500 slash three. So it's a 500 watt amp into three channels and so two of the channels will go to the front speaker and uh, the third channel goes to the sub and the good thing about this amp is that it's pretty much designed to do what I'll be doing which is run a set of uh, you know fronts and then have an output for the sub a single uh, output for the sub so um, I'll be able to tweak, you know, the crossover frequencies and, and all that uh, on the amp. So we'll look at that when that comes in. Um, so we'll probably next look at um, creating the adapter so that I can put these six and a half inch drivers in a five by seven hole. All right. Um, I created this template in Illustrator thinking that I'm going to make my own adapters. But again, if you guys are using a 5x7 or 6x8 speaker, you don't even have to deal with this. Um, if you are using 6.5 or you know, 5 and a quarter, 
uh, components, then you will have to use an adapter. And like I said, there's pre-made ones. You know, in my case, I'm going to make my own. Um, so I drew this to scale. That's a one-to-one -one drawing there. Um, I was able to get the five by eight, the outside of the um, template um, online. Somebody posted it somewhere. Um, I think it was an AutoCAD file. And then what I did was I drew the um, Focal specs, the, the driver spec, onto that template. That's why you see that uh, inside diameter and outside diameter, those dimensions are specific for my speaker. So um, I don't know, you know, unless you're putting my exact speaker in, this, this template's not going to be useful for anybody, but just showing you my approach here. Okay, here's the template that I drew on the MDF, three quarter inch MDF, and um, I used the graphic that I created on the computer. I cut out the outside of the um, template and I placed it on the MDF. I taped it down in a couple spots and then I just basically traced around it. Um, if you put a tack through the center, now you've got a center that you can use a compass and draw your inside cutout. That was easier than trying to cut the paper. I mean you could do that. You could cut out this circle and then trace the paper as well. So that's how I created that. Alright, so I just want to show you the amp that just came in. This is the JL Audio XD503. All of your sound adjustments are made there. Um, all of the speaker input output here but check out the really cool thing about this amp look how small that is this is gonna fit perfectly underneath the passenger seat to replace the Bose unit um, you can get these cl class D amps in uh, 5 channel too so you could run all four of your speakers plus a subwoofer output and they're really not that much bigger than this one so if you're going to be replacing the Bose amp, I'd recommend a good Class D amp. Um, they're pretty affordable, sound quality is great, and um, the size is awesome. Alright, we're here at the door. I'm going to remove the door panel. Um, there's a lot of info online on how to do this, but uh, I'm doing it. I figured I may as well set the tripod up. So, what we've got is a, a cover. Um, trim cover here and a cover here. There's two screws under this and one here. And uh, once you remove those three screws then it's just fasteners on the outside of the door panel. So let's start here. a better shot of this one. This you want to have the door handle open and you're basically just putting like a little flat head behind here. You see how easy that is? And there's your screw there. Alright, I have the screws removed but before I um, go to pop the fasteners and remove the door panel I want to remove the sail panel with the tweeter. Now a lot of people say just grab here and pull. Um, I seem to have a, a little bit better luck. If you come in from the top and you just kind of pry it from here, you can get this first fastener to pop. And then I kind of lift this end away and push the panel that way. There. And look at that. I didn't break any fasteners. Amazing. There's the factory tweeter. It's a sail panel. There's one fastener here and one here. Alright, I know the sun might be messing with some of these uh, videos here. But uh, let me just show you. So, we've got fasteners around the outside of the door. What I 
typically like to do is I'll get a tool in and separate it uh, so I've got a little gap and then what I'm trying to do is find the fasteners that way I can put pressure on each one so I'll take something where I can just slide it easily without scratching and try to find the fastener and there it is you can you know as you slide this down you hit something that tells me that there's a fastener there so I'm gonna just see? and then on this side so it's right here right there so I can take my tool and you could do this with anything really but now there I go I just uh, popped one of them and so I just do that all the way around okay so I've gone all the way around the panel it's all loose now I can pull it up alright so with the door panel now off of the door you still can't remove it until you take care of a couple things uh, one is you got a connector wiring connector to the back of this switch and the other is the door handle and window switch so you can pry this off and uh, what you do is you'll fold the door panel back and just from behind release that wiring connector so let's deal with the door handle <coughs> all right so there's that now we got a screw uh, wiring connector right here Here is press in and pull out. There you go. Now you get the door panel going. These are the fasteners. So look at I didn't break these three, but on the other side, which is right here, I broke that one, that one, that one. Now I can actually reuse it. There's enough uh, meat there. Probably not that one. I don't know. All right, here's the speaker, and we're gonna remove that wiring connection. Is here. All right, get the screws removed from the Bose speaker. There it is. Both speaker is out. Here's your 5x7, 6x8 oval. I'm going to put my baffle on this and my 6.5 inch round driver goes there. Um, just want to show you this connector has four uh, conductors to it. And the reason why is two um, of these wires go from the amp. To the door speaker here the other two are in parallel and they go up to the tweeter so uh, there aren't separate wires run from the tweeter to the amp underneath the passenger seat so I can't put my crossovers under the seat with the amp unless I run a pair of wires back to the passenger seat and I said early on this is going to be a, a easy affordable installation. I'm not going to make this more than it needs to be. So I'm going to locate my crossovers right here. And so I'll have the, the wiring from the crossover to the woofer and the tweeter. And I'll, um, if I need to service the crossovers or any of this stuff, um, I can remove the door panel fast enough, especially if I get extra connectors. I mean, I can pull a door panel off in five minutes if I don't care about breaking fasteners. So, so to make it easy, I'm putting everything right here. Woofer, tweeter up top, crossover over there. All right, real quick, I have a hole right here that uh, my speaker wire will go through and out to the crossovers. Alright, here it is with the baffle installed. 
I've got my sealant here. It's drying. Um, you can see that the screws that hold the baffle on are countersunk so that when I put my speaker on it doesn't interfere when uh, I need to fasten the speaker to the baffle. So I'll just um, stagger the mounting holes to this. Alright, I'm snipping out this connector and looking at the wiring diagram um, two of these wires go to the woofer from the amp and according to the wire diagram its the colors are dark blue and red well you can see there's two dark blues, two reds so I have to look at the tweeter to see which ones are the two from the tweeter so you got red with the silver that's this one and blue with the silver and that's this one so these are the tweeter which means these have to be from the amp all right real quick I've got my four connections here and the wire run for the crossovers and the drive all right I'm fastening the driver here uh, quick note, you want to roll down the window and make sure that the magnet clears the window when it's all the way down. Alright, so if you're working on this with the window up, at least do that before you fasten everything. Alright, here it is with the crossover installed. And I have covers and I've got double-sided tape on that. I'll probably do something more to secure that as well. Uh, right now I'm just going to turn on the ignition make sure that I'm getting sound. Alright, so I just checked I'm getting sound through the speakers. Um, I have to put the, uh, this is still the stock tweeter, so I have to change out the tweeter. And um, I, I can't really set the crossover. Uh, crossover has a couple adjustments, but I can't do that until the amp is installed, which I can't do today. So I think what I'll do is I'll just use some medium settings on the crossover and um, uh, the uh, tweeter setting and I'll button things up and if I need to remove the door panel um, and make more adjustments after the amps in I'll do that. Alright here's the sail panel I'm gonna be cutting down these clips for the OEM tweeter I'm gonna make that flush so I can put my uh, Focal tweeter on there and they do sell these from Mazda without the tweeter um, cut out here and you can get them uh, just plain and cut your own hole and put your own tweeter in but I'm taking the easy path I'm just gonna use the existing piece alright so here it is sitting flush in that space um, I made a little undercut so the lip of the tweeter would fit in there um, now I just have to figure out how to fasten it I don't know if I can get a strap on it hot glue Alright, we're all ready to put the door panel back on. So first thing uh, is the window switch. Alright, we're going to be doing the amp install. So first thing we want to do is remove the negative post connector. We disconnect the battery. That way we can work and we don't have to worry about shorting out anything. All right, we're at the passenger seat here, and we're going to remove, uh, it's probably mounting bolt here and under here. Here and here. Let's remove the covers and expose the bolts. All right, this is underneath the seat airbag sensor connector. Um, let me remove that and I'll show you how to uh, go about doing that. It's really hard to see right here. All right, here's the connector. So what you want to do is push down on this thin piece here. Push it that squeeze it that way before trying to pull on the connector. And then this lever opens up. You can see it swivels. Alright, these are 14 millimeter uh, bolts holding the seat down. Um, 
I've heard that they're a little tough to get out. I'm going to use an impact driver, but they're all easy to get to. You should have no problem just putting a socket wrench on these guys. All right, here it is with the seat removed. There are the three connectors that we saw on that wiring diagram. We got a couple bolts holding this down. Looks like, I don't know, 10 millimeter. All right, we'll be back. Okay, they are 10 millimeter, and I found a third one right there that has to be removed. All right, now the fun part. I'm going to start cutting into these connectors. I'll be getting the input from the head unit, output to the front speakers, and output to the sub. All right, I'll show you when I'm done. All right, here we are so far. I've got one connector all soldered to wiring. And uh, I still have to do remote on and the input from one of the other connectors. The amp is probably, probably going to sit just like that. And I'm going to put it on top rather than underneath where the Bose amp was. Um, for a couple reasons. One, it'll cool better. Although, I really don't expect it to get hot. It's really not going to be pushed that hard. But, um, mostly because all the adjustments are up top. If I put it underneath here, I don't know if you can see, but I won't be able to get at any of the adjustments. So, if I keep it on top, I can reach in and, and uh, make some adjustments to sound. So I want to talk about a couple things before we button this up. Um, this is a 500 watt amp. Now the way they rate that is at 2 ohms. So if I have 2 ohm speakers in the front and a 2 ohm sub, I can draw as much as 500 amps. And actually this amp's probably underrated by a little, uh, maybe 10 to 20 percent. So, so it could be argued that I shouldn't use the, the power from the stock Bose amp um, and I should run a separate power line to the battery but actually if you do the math um, I should be fine because the Bose amp uses a, a 30 amp fuse so there's a 30 amp fuse that protects um, this circuit right here to this amp now 30 times 12 is 360 watts at 12 volts when the car is running, you're probably putting out 14-ish or more. So that, that um, you know, I could probably go up to as much as 400 watts. Now, even though this is 500, that's at a 2-ohm impedance on both the sub and the front. I'm going to be running 4-ohm in the front, and my dual voice coil sub, I'm going to actually wire it as an 8 ohm load. So I'll be putting out much less to the sub, probably under 100 watts. The front at 4 ohm will put out uh, probably 80, 80 watts, maybe a, a little more. Um, so if you add it all up, I'm at 300 watts at the most, probably under 300. So um, so again, if you do the math, I should be good with a 30 amp fuse, which is already um, the, the power wire to this amp, which went to the Bose, was a 30 amp protected circuit. So, so that's my reasoning for keeping the stock wiring and don't have to uh, run a separate wire to the battery, which is great. Um, the other thing too I want to mention is I wasn't right now I've got the stock sub I'm gonna wire to this just to check it out now I don't know what the um, impedance is on the stock sub I can't get any info on the web I just put my meter on it and I got a little under 2 ohms so I'm assuming it's a 2 ohm 8 inch subwoofer and um, this amps rated for 2 ohms uh, on the on the sub output so I can safely drive that speaker um,
but again you, you saw what I'm gonna do I'm gonna put that uh, 12 inch at some point but to test the system I'm gonna just keep uh, keep the stock sub alright so we'll be back alright I have the seat up so I have easy access to the amp and I'm trying to set the levels right now and um, I've got a pretty decent midpoint here um, and again that Bose sub in the back uh, I'm setting it for that but it's kinda of funny that thing is definitely coming up short it, it's rattling the whole rear deck even at low power I'm gonna give you a quick demonstration it's kinda of funny uh, let me turn the volume down alright here you go see if you guys can hear this rear deck is just vibrating it's it sounds terrible we're in the trunk right now and we're looking at the Bose uh, 8 inch sub the factory sub um, and what I've done is I've cut into the wiring from the amp um, I'll put my own wiring on then I'll go to that uh, 12 inch sub and I'll locate it somewhere in the trunk haven't figured out what to do about fastening it but I want to make it so it's easy to um, remove so if we need to put stuff in the trunk we can just pull it out alright there's my wiring right there and I've got tie wraps to keep the wire up and I've got it coming down through here I may end up moving this stuff but we'll start out this way I'm gonna use this um, these connectors I'll cut this in half one side will be on the sub, the other will be soldered to the sub wiring, and that way we can easily remove the sub. Uh, we'll just disconnect it and pull it out when we need to. So obviously not going, you know, nuts on this install. We're just trying to make this quick and affordable. We'll see uh, how this sub sounds in a minute. All right, here's the wiring here. This is going to be temporary till we find a place that we like and um, then I'll probably put some sort of quick fastener, something where it'll be held in place but we could easily uh, disconnect it and pull it out. Alright, so I've got the new sub hooked up. Uh, I set the uh, amp for the new sub and wow, what a difference. Um, I almost convinced myself that that Bose subwoofer could be adequate. Um, I was almost going to suggest it to you guys. Maybe, you know, if you didn't want to deal with a sub, you could keep it. But what a difference when you put this other sub in. Um, it just is amazing. It's so much better than stock. Um, this whole system now... We've got rid of 10 speakers, and we now have 4 plus the sub. So, half, half the amount of speakers, 3 times the sound. I'm going to try to demo the uh, sound right now, but just note that my camera will try to lower the gain as the volume goes up. Uh, so it's really not the best way to uh, evaluate the system, but uh, take my word for it, sounds awesome. And I really didn't spend a lot on these components. Um, probably a little over 400 bucks total. And um, that, that's not a ton of money, especially if you're going to have the car for a long time and you look forward to driving it the way we now do with this car. So hope this helped anybody that's thinking about upgrading their Bose system. And um, good luck if you do an install.